to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Well, tonight I'd like to welcome the Tippecanoe Middle School Student Senate representatives. They're here with their advisor, Nancy Murray. And um, joining us at the podium will be uh, Ethan Boyce, Natalie Grace, and Alan Murray. If you all will come and give us a quick update about what's going on at the middle school, we'll turn the microphone over to you guys. Hello, I'm Alan Murray. I've been a member of Student Council for all three years in middle school, and my mission is to be the Middle School Student Council is a service organization. The Student Council will sponsor and support various activities of the school throughout the entire year. Hello, I'm Ethan Royce. I've been a student council representative for all my years in middle school. Uh, we got elected in September. Uh, the school moved into school year, and we have organized many events since then. For instance, the first one was the student council retreat we had, September 17th. And it was basically an orientation for the student council members, especially those who were new to the organization. And it was kind of a refresher for those who had shown up in the previous years. And it was kind of a way for the older, uh, older students to help out <coughs> new people. And was, we did a lot of team building exercises to kind of get the environment of uh, team and leadership. And we also started on our first project in the fall. And so we also did a spirit week in September, which is kind of basically a way to raise school spirit. And uh, that was September 25th to 29th. And we did things like uh, Tuesday was Twin Day, and we kind of matched with some other person. And Friday was Tip Friday to spread pride for the school. And we also had um, members help with the <laughs> dance, where we kind of just hang out with freshmen and the teacher on staff. And we also had, did in November uh, door decorating contests to get the students involved in competing. Which was a Thanksgiving theme, so we could have the students spread spirit among the school for the holiday. And the contest was judged by the teachers, and uh, there was a winner from each grade who received the award for their efforts. Hi, I'm Ellen Gross. I'm in eighth grade, and this is my first year in student council. And today, I'm here to talk to you about what we've just recently done. So in December, with the student body, they really enjoyed the door decor, so we decided to do it for the winter. And we did this kind of holiday themed, and just wonder if it's themed in there. And so for the exams, we kind of wanted to take the pressure off of the um, student body, and we did a spirit week the week before. And so um, students dressed up in up these sweaters, our holiday hat day, and we had a lot of fun. So on December 12th, unfortunately, we lost a member of our typically middle school staff, Sarah Gessler. And instead of doing a white out day, to honor her, we had done a gray out day so we could support her and other brain cancer victims. So that kind of led us up to the end, to the end of 2017. So then in January and February, we had done a Super Bowl contest where each fifth period had um, brought in Kansas City and whichever, um, however many they brought in, whoever brought in the most had won a prize, which was a repair flow. And they didn't go to this. So for the non-perishable, um, the week after we did a non-perishable food drive, and that was also, and both of them were to help restock the needy basket. And all together we raised seven hundred and seven pounds and a 
hundred dollars in here. And to to uh, uh, like celebrate that we have done another stair. Um, I'll talk about the things that we plan to do for the rest of the year. Um, first, we, we've done this for a couple of years. Um, it's called Penny Wars, and it's a competition between grades, and each grade gets a bucket, and you can dump pennies and dollar bills into your grades bucket to add to your score, and then you can uh, dump silver coins into other grades buckets to uh, decrease their score. So the winner gets a, the grade winner gets a prize, and uh, all the proceeds go to Relay for Life fundraiser that LT Ball does. And then the next thing that we do, we did um, Teacher Appreciation Week. Last year we gave each teacher a few cookies, and um, we also made like personalized cards for each, each like, section, like language arts teachers and things like that. And to wrap it all up, we um, do a tailgate party where, uh, and this is a fundraiser for like other things that we can do. And kids can come out and socialize or have fun and play games like football or dodgeball. And uh, we also have the concessions too. Thank you. Thank you for your report. <laughs> Next uh, item on the agenda is says legislative update for the actual uh, tax incentive review. There you go. <laughs> That's right. um, yeah, I just wanted to give a report on some recent activity with this uh, tax incentive review council. Uh, we had a meeting on March 6th to review some of the uh, tax incentive agreements that are in place uh, between the city and some companies. Of course, the school board's involved in that. The county also has representatives there, as well as the township and, uh, and CPC. So, just to generally give you the purpose of it, uh, we meet annually to review these agreements and make sure that the companies that have come into Tip City or started a project in Tip City are holding up their end of the bargain. You know, they get a tax incentive, a tax break in, in exchange for bringing a certain number of jobs to the town and other benefits. So every year this council meets to review how that's going and make sure these companies are compliant. And uh, theoretically, if there was some problem, we could uh, take some action to take away that tax. Anyway, just to provide an update, um, all the current agreements are, are going fine. There are no companies that are out of compliance. There are really only two uh, that are still operational. That's uh, one with Broadway Hair Studio and Randall Residence. And so those uh, are, are incompliant and there's really no action to be taken. I did also want to report to the board because we voted on a couple of other ones in the last couple of years uh, that are not going to go forward. I think in 2016 we voted on one for Revacore. Uh, they've decided not to pursue that project, so that one is not going forward. Uh, another one was for Gateway Plastics, uh, which had a plan to bring the plant here in Tip City. And that also is stalled. Uh, I, I can't say that either of them are permanently stopped, but for now, those companies are not going forward with those projects. Uh, and so we've canceled those agreements. Uh, again, these things may come up again, uh, and if so, we would have a new vote. I'm going to move in for now, those are stopped. But beyond that, things are going well, and there's really wasn't much to do uh, with it. Okay. Any questions? Thank you. All right, next item on the agenda is our superintendent and assistant superintendent uh, reports. Hi, I am A, uh, Business Advisory Council, our, our seven job uh, fair that we recently held uh, March 9th. We were over at the high school and seven businesses uh, providing opportunities for our students over three lunch periods to apply for seven jobs. Uh, we had over 50 students step up and submit their applications, so uh, that's great, and I hope that many of them are successful. I know a number of them yesterday, last year uh, were employed, so that's exciting. As a business advisory council, uh, 
I would uh, like to just make sure everybody knows that our local businesses are welcome and we will have our last meeting on May 3rd uh, from 4.30 to 5.30 p.m. Uh, next item, community engagement. Uh, and Get there for just a second. I want a few notes about that. On Tuesday, March 12th, uh, we held our second in a series of community engagement meetings. Uh, more than uh, 60 people attended that evening. We were very excited about that. Our first session, we had over 100. So uh, it still was a strong attendance. There's a lot going on, and I know as we move forward spring, uh, it gets very busy. Uh, but that was a great turnout. Uh, one of the aspects that was highlighted that evening was dealt with school safety. And so we talked about current majors that are in place, such as our uh, name tags, our signing in, our buzzing into the building, we call that uh, you know, controlled access, but also our PC duress uh, buttons uh, that we have uh, available. Also the uh, 911 uh, radios that we have available, uh, as well as security cameras. Uh, staff and student training was also highlighted, and much of that extends from our lockdown practices that we have. Uh, the second portion of that uh, dealt with uh, the schools, it's called Safe Schools, as a tip line. That will be in place and on April 7th, the first day of back in spring break. And uh, we're excited about having the opportunity that will allow for uh, any safety concerns. Uh, it allows for uh, anonymous as well as uh, name tips and then pain uh, for bullying as well as just general tips uh, that may be helpful for us as a school district. Uh, that will be looked very carefully and monitored. It's not something that if it's an I-1-1 call, you need to make sure that you contact I-1-1. It's not for an emergency basis, but it will make us aware of situations that we can investigate try to monitor and help uh, intervene to make that more comfortable for whoever's involved and then get to the bottom of the problem. Uh, and then the latter portion of that being dealt with our uh, facilities, and we continue to discuss those. Uh, Mr. Gary Wister, who's with the CC Director of Services, helped highlight that portion of the, the meeting. And uh, on that, we will take place from our fourth meeting that is held on February the 20th. Uh, and uh, some of the questions we had asked the state, so there are a number of questions that were provided, so we took time to answer those. Uh, in addition, we can still be looking at our middle school and our elder law uh, plan for reconstruction and renovation uh, and what would be the benefits of that. We also talked a bit about uh, OFCC funding, that's the state funding, uh, and some of the benefits of that, what are some of the pitfalls or some of the challenges with that type of funding. Uh, we also highlight that we will see some of our exercises in communication of assistance support for really investing in these new schools in the school of the United County Law. And uh, there seems to be a very strong interest in the community in construction. So our follow-up meeting that will occur either on April 24th or the 26th, and I'm going to talk about that in just a second, uh, we'll be looking at the K-3 discussion and really double to that so we definitely want our community uh, to know about that and hopefully that we'll come out with that email. So I just sent an email that was uh, about communication uh, whether the 24th or the 25th or the 16th as a Tuesday or a Thursday as for our board. Um, but is there, no, this is April, April 24th or April 26th. What's on Tuesday? We do have a board meeting on that Monday, so that will be two meetings back to back. The other on Thursday, but we do have a YAPC meeting the following Monday. So we plan to get on both sides of the yard and down the I can do the 24th or the 26th. 24th works better for you. All right. So let's plan for the 24th then. Is that fine? This is okay. The 24th will be in the documentation. Thank you. All right. Stay in the schools. I can see. Uh, stay in the schools uh, is a nice opportunity for uh, city schools, to city schools as well as Bethel uh, Township schools. Uh, to really present to our local area. So uh, there was a couple of that was provided for the water cafe in the upper area and the class of the board uh, Those were guests uh, and guests from our local businesses to our uh, support agencies, foundations, 
and just uh, very unique community members. So uh, the slideshow was presented to them, just showing some of the things that we did in the computer. They put on our quality profile, our regional region, uh, and these as well as our crest, uh, and then things regarding our academics. We visualize now that the app uh, to uh, pieces such as the Triangle House and uh, design things. So we just kind of go through it. Uh, talk a little bit about our strategic planning as well. Uh, have time for questions and answers and uh, it was a good experience. Just yeah. And next we have personnel. Any first any questions when we go to that? Okay, first of all, welcome to the high school kids. Thanks for coming tonight. I know it's mandatory, but thanks for coming anyway. If some of you um, forgot your sheet. I'm going to slide it down here. You can break it up and come up and get one today. Tonight we only have um, one person, and that's um, going to be our long-term sub when Mrs. Borchers heads out on maternity leave. We have Mr. Paul Winkler. He's going to be filling in in that spot. So, um, Mr. Winkler, would you go ahead and introduce yourself? Uh, good evening. My name is um, Paul Winkler. Um, I've actually been born and raised in Dayton. I went to Northmont, uh, got my bachelor's at Wright State. Uh, during that time, I also took some pre-engineering classes as well. Um, so I feel very qualified uh, for this position. I look forward to the opportunity to work on this That's all I have. However, fixes that are being made are do have a useful life. 
So those two buildings, LT and the middle school, will be between 70 and 80 years old. The high school will then be 40 years old. And that new PK through 3 building that we just built is now 25 years old. And what are we left with? We're leaving that administration 25 years out in exactly the same place that we are today. What should we do? How are we going to do it? Are we going to use PI funds? Are we going to do a bond levy? What does this campus look like? So it'll feel like we simply kicked the can down the road. I heard in the roundtable discussions, there's people talking that some of the reasons that we're not asking for more is because TIF is too cheap, we couldn't get it passed. Let's only ask for what we think we can get past. Again, that's really short-sighted. That makes me sad, right? Let's, let's go for what we want. Let's ask for what we want. Let's show this community what we want, what we think it can be. I think these types of excuses just minimize, can maybe minimize if your community knew what your long plan, long-term plan really looked like. I certainly don't have the definitive answers, and I don't stand here before you saying that I do. But I want to see some proposals that maximize this campus right here on Hyatt to its full potential. We've got an amazing piece of real estate right here. What could we do this with this? Show me what you're thinking. Show me what you want it to be. That's what we tell our kids, isn't it? Isn't that what you're told in class? Think what do you want it to be? Show me what you want it to be, and let's take that to the community. Show me a phased approach to putting a PK through eight on this site. Show me a pickup and drop off that doesn't congest our neighborhoods and impose upon our neighbors out there. Show me a campus that incorporates those safety issues that we talked about one week ago that shows me a secure playground that people worry about for our elementary age students. There's great potential on this campus right here. Show me that you've thought how you want to use it. Start with our immediate need of a PK through three and show me exactly how you can add four to eight, four grades four through eight in five years when that high school bond levy expires, right? At the most recent board conference in Columbus, I understand that Arlington Heights presented their facilities approach, which included a high degree of community input. You've already started down a great path with these last two community engagement meetings. Let's continue on that path. Let's continue to engage the community. Let's find out what is it going to take to pass the bond. What do they want to see? What are their hopes, their visions? What is their dream for this campus? There was somebody in um, that roundtable discussion last week who I think summarized it really well. They said, your school should be a showcase of your community. I really like that a lot. It kind of becomes what I was feeling. Let's make the realtors proud when they bring new potential people into Tip City. Let's make them proud to drive down Hyatt Street and showcase our building. In closing, I want to ask the administration to do the same. Please do the same due diligence for alternative solutions that allows us to compare and contrast our options before committing to spending money on LT and, and the middle school, ultimately leading to a community support of a levy that will be needed to fund the preferred plan. Thank you for your time. Thanks for all you do. All right, moving on to President's comments. I have a few. I too would like to welcome uh, our students here tonight. Uh, I'm sure you uh, glad to see you all here. I, I know that it is a requirement, but uh, it's a good sign uh, that you're interested or that uh, you're being forced to have an interest at least today, tonight, in, in the process. So um, I'm glad to see you here. Um, to our uh, uh, community members, um, you'll notice that all of us do have the computers in front of you, us tonight. Uh, we are using board docs um, for the first time in a televised uh, setting. Uh, just wanted to make you aware that uh, all of our agendas are here um, and that uh, we have uh, attachments and all of that is also available to the general public through the use of uh, uh, our district website. There's a link to the board docs so just for that. Uh, data is also being uh, streamed real time as far as votes and so forth. So if you're at home uh, on a night of a board meeting and you really have nothing else better to do and you want to see what's going on at the board meeting and watch both, you can do that with post social media. 
Um, I would also like to thank uh, the community for the community engagement session uh, last week. Uh, it was uh, encouraging that we still had uh, some uh, good interest in, in where we're going uh, with facilities as well as uh, the uh, safety program that we have in place here. Uh, mentioned the uh, tiny house, uh, got some, uh, some additional publicity this weekend. They were down at the uh, Dayton Home Show. Uh, I took an opportunity to go down to the home show. Uh, it was uh, probably one of the most walk-through exhibits I saw uh, down there while I was there. So uh, pretty neat uh, recognition for uh, the students that are participating in that to the district. Uh, also this weekend was our uh, high school play. Uh, great job uh, by our, uh, our staff and students uh, putting on uh, that entertainment. Spring break starts next week. Uh, be safe. I want uh, everybody coming back uh, safe uh, the following week. So please uh, take some extra caution and, and enjoy your time away from the buildings and school. Uh, what else do I have here? Uh, it's a busy time of the year. Uh, we've got graduation and so forth coming up. Uh, we're in spring sports starts uh, this Saturday, opening day for that, uh, for our spring sports. So uh, again, uh, we're wrapping up this school year. I know some of you are already anxious and wish the school year was ending next week, but uh, it's not going to be long here. We're going to be uh, graduating and, and moving on to uh, uh, summer break. So uh, uh, pay attention and stay uh, in tune with with the classroom, and, and uh, it'll be here before you know. That's the uh, president's comments. Uh, we have next item is uh, approval of minutes. We have three copies of minutes, uh, one for the February 20th special meeting. Uh, we have the regular meeting on February 26th. And again, our work session that took place on March 12th that we're going to do tonight. Uh, so I will entertain a motion first to uh, approve the minutes. Motion to approve. Second. I have a motion and a second from Corinne and Teresa. Any discussion or corrections? All right, hearing none, will you please call roll? Mrs. Dahl? Yes. Mrs. Dunaway? Yes. Mrs. Heatherly? Yes. Mr. Benters? Yes. Mr. Spanner? Yes. That motion is approved. The minutes are approved and will be posted. Next on the uh, agenda is our treasurer's report. Mr. Stevens. One sec. Questions I might be able to 
All right, then we can call roll, please. Mr. Benders? Yes. Mrs. Heatherly? Yes. Mrs. Stahl? Yes. Mrs. Dunaway? Yes. Mr. Spano? Yes. That motion is approved. I have a recommended approval of the following transfers and advances. And as you see in your content, we have some transfers from the general fund to various team athletic funds. And also I have the advance from the general fund to the OO3 Premier Partners Grant Fund for the construction of the Phase 1 Stadium project. I'll make a motion. Second. Motion second. So, Mr. Gunners. Any questions? Call roll, please. Mr. Spano? Yes. Mr. Venters? Yes. Mrs. Dahl? Yes. Mrs. Dunaway? Yes. Mrs. Mrs. Heatherly? Yes. I didn't miss anyone, did I? No, it's faster. faster. No, it's Okay. All right. Next item, uh, re recommend approval of the fiscal year 18 appropriation minutes. I'll make a motion. Second. Uh, motion second. Myself and Ms. Dahl. Just, uh, this appropriation amendment does include the advance of money from 001 to 003, and then it also includes an increase in the expenditures from the 003 fund so that we can open the PO for the construction project. Mr. Spano? Yes. Mrs. Dahl? Yes. Mrs. Dunaway? Yes. Mrs. Heatherly? Yes. Mr. Benders? Yes. That motion is approved. I'd like to recommend approval of ORC 570541 purchase order certification then and now for the month of February 2018. I'll move. I'll second. Uh, motion is second. Mrs. Dahl opposed. There was only one item on the list for some bus repairs. Can't wait on bus repairs. Any questions? Call roll, please. Mrs. Dahl? Yes. Mrs. Heatherly? Yes. Mrs. Dunaway? Yes. Mr. Ben Mr. Spano? Yes. Mr. Benters? Yes. That motion is approved. Uh, last item for the treasurer. I recommend approval of the rates of tax to be levied for school purposes on the general duplicates of 2018, subject to any additional levies approved by the I'll make a motion. Second. There's a motion and second. Uh, just to let everyone know, this is just regular procedure for the county auditor's office. There's a document that all board members will have to sign. All the numbers are calculated by the county auditor's office. I've recalculated them and they appear to be approved. Any questions? Roll roll, please. Mr. Venters? Yes. Mrs. Heatherly? Yes. Mrs. Dahl? Yes. Mrs. Dunaway? Yes. Mr. Spanner? Yes. That motion is approved. That is all for the treasurer. Thank you. Next item on the agenda is uh, under old business and there's an update on our strategic plan. Well, I'd like to um, give you want some updated information. Uh, in our February meeting, we uh, discussed our strategic plan and at that time decided to, um, everybody seemed to get an update on where we were as far as engaging stakeholders in the process. And it seems like the discussions had started under each of the four pillars um, that we had deemed uh, important. Uh, we also at that time determined that we would explore professional consultation and I'm uh, pleased to report that we have interviewed two uh, professional groups and uh, we hope to take a recommendation to our work session on April 9th. Uh, 
Katie Barker could not be here tonight to share this information, but I wanted to make sure that uh, everybody knew that we are committed to the process and we made sure that the consultants that we were working with understood that we were committed to our current investment in vision, mission, uh, beliefs, values, and the four pillars that we're working under. Uh, what I'd like to do tonight is uh, challenge the uh, folks that are working on the strategic plan to conti uh, consider continuing your discussions so that we can determine if the content under each of our four strategic areas is indeed still current areas for us to work on. Uh, one thing that we're hearing from each of the groups is that there seems to be a lot of information that we want to make sure that we include in these pillars. Um, the information that we uh, outlined as strategies was developed by the previous board under the leadership of Steve Horton through the Ohio School Board Association. And so now that we have stakeholders from the community and our staff who have joined these discussions, uh, we want to know is the discussions leading to changing any of the content or altering any content under our pillars. Uh, we believe that once we do decide which um, consulting firm to help us, that they're going to be challenging us to do the same thing, so we would like to use this interval of time to continue working in that fashion. And we believe that the consultants will be helping us to determine what kind of criteria we'll be using to evaluate, as well as the time frame. Uh, one thing that I'd like to remind uh, everyone working on this strategic plan is that this is a five-year projection or five-year plan, and so when developing the strategies and the action steps that will then come from the future, uh, uh, we'll be using uh, both a short-term and long-term and a long-term planning to determine what we'll be doing first and what we will move on to and uh, what will be more ambitious to work towards at the end of the five years. Uh, we also think that the consultant's going to work with us to develop some criteria, and some of those criteria that you're using when you're uh, discussing with your groups in order to prioritize what you put on the pillar uh, would be, do we have the resources, both uh, the manpower, the financial resources, and will our stakeholders support us? So, um, we, I'm suggesting and recommending that we use this time to have the groups continue to convene Take this opportunity to uh, try to get your arms around a good discussion that's been happening. Uh, use that discussion to evaluate what's currently under the pillars and how we might alter that, change it, scrap it, uh, and, and, and reprioritize that. And use the um, the idea of how would we uh, prioritize this in the short term, interim, and long term, and what other criteria that we might be uh, developing for that time. I wanted to open it up to the board members for comments about that and um, questions that we have. Well, one of the questions um, that I would have is since we don't know who we're going to be working with in the direction and how they're going to lead us, I'm not really sure what we can determine in our group what to keep and what not to keep under that pillar. Because that was a big discussion of. We, we wanted to get an idea, you know, to have that lead, that consultant or whoever it is, to say, hey, this is what it looks like, this is how we do it, this is the criteria you need to use to determine what you, what you need to keep and what you don't need to keep. And uh, I, I guess I'm, I'm concerned that just doing it within our own groups, we all might go four different ways, where if we kind of wait till that uh, guy gets here to whoever it's going to be to help us and give us direction, on how to move forward so that we're all moving in the same direction forward? I think I think that's what whoever we decide on is going to ask us to do. So if, if the discussion can start going in that direction, that would be a good investment of time because um, while whoever we hire can help us, I think that we're going to make sure that we prioritize um, short-term, long-term, interim, and some of that criteria is what we're going to say, which is do we have the resources to be able to find the talent or the skills to do it? And is it something that our state is going to support? I'm pretty confident that those will be at least those criteria. 
history, so we were, we were in one of our groups, Dr. Compass, one of our groups. Is there anything that you wanted to ask that you can take a question from the first one? Um, well, I, I, I'm pretty much on the same page as Corinne, because until we did, I was obviously still in the class for so I didn't get the second year. But until we get that person who is going to be the person in charge of you know, this whole thing, we're, we're just shooting fish in the barrel. We don't know what they're going to tell us. So continue to work as we have been. And you know, the groups are continuing to make progress, at least mine is, and everybody else's as well. And, and that's all we can do. And when that person comes in, we need to read a record. And that's their job, to read the records. So I'm not going to try to guess what they're going to want us to do. I'll wait, be told, and then make justice. Well, I know mean, I would ask that you're looking at the content of other reports and make sure that there's a discussion in your group matching the content of your film. And I'll just add, uh, I think for both of the discussions and interviews we've had so far, we are very pleased that they are willing uh, to work with us, even though we're midstream in the process. And so that, that's great because that's a mutual circumstance for us and them. Uh, but I think that they also value that we've had some of these individual conversations with our subgroups. And uh, they recognize that. And so uh, they were supporting but not starting at ground zero of what we were where we're at before. And I think the one reason is that certainly, even if we are making our stuff with some decisions, that ultimately we still have our notes and all of our background information. So when we sit down with them, that we can show that and behind the screen all of the background information. Uh, and they did probably see some elements that you brought forward and forward that you can let them hang out. And I feel confident that they will do this from that position. So I think, uh, as Teresa has mentioned, that one of the pieces I get, I think that we need, once they arrive and make a decision, we need to be open, open to their services and their encouragement and their direction. In, and the bottom line, you can just emphasize we want a very strong, portable document that we're going to be proud of that's going to help guide us and just be uh, So when we go back to our groups, what do you want us to work on? Just continue? Because like I think, because like in my group, I feel like we've done a lot of work that we're kind of at this what next spot. So maybe we can meet the chair people of all these pillars meet and kind of discuss what, what's going on because we're just kind of out of what what now. You know, so I'm not really sure, um, you know, it's hard to ask people for their time, so I'm not really sure what the next step is for us. Uh, I, I respect that. I, it may be that different groups, maybe you are one in the sense of a small cause, mm -hmm. because I, well, we are hoping that by April the 9th we will be able to have a recommendation. Uh, and so then shortly thereafter, we should be able to move forward. So it's spring break, it's really not going to be too much of a delay. <laughs> I guess I, I would just like to comment on, I've got the door of you, so, so uh, I see the plan as as I see the whole, the whole message is it's sort of the guidance or expectations of the board wants done over the next five years. Um, so I don't see it as an execution to do that. I think necessarily I see it as guidance for, for what the desire of the board is to have done over the next five years. So um, for the facilities plan or pillar, we've been looking at, we know we need a master facility plan for the district. It's going to take out the next 25, 30 plus years. Where we what we want for the facilities. So <clears throat> that is one of the key um, strategies that we have as far as um, the facilities plan. Another piece of that is the maintenance plan for our buildings and having uh, a plan for how we're going to deal with maintenance, how we're going to uh, reject maintenance, uh, and track maintenance, et cetera, et cetera. So another piece of our facilities uh, plan and strategic plan would be uh, make sure that we develop a maintenance plan for our buildings. Another piece that we're saying is the facilities plan was dealing with safety. And so we outlined some things that we want to make sure as considered 
in, in safety for the uh, uh, TV plane controls, maybe it's upgrading cameras, uh, uh, different uh, entrance procedures, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Again, these are just what we believe the board wants executed over the next five years. Um, the action plan to go do those things was probably another route to make sure that those things got, got accomplished. And in fact, to that point, the, um, I've sort of shifted gears, uh, and, and I think we have a fairly good outline of what our plan looks like for facilities, and have begun bringing a committee together. It's actually a superintendent treasurer's committee um, that went in back in, in January uh, to deal with facilities and start talking about a master plan and what that master plan would, would uh, look like and what things that we need, based a little bit on what was out of my master, out of my uh, facility strategic plan, meaning we need to go look at assessments of each one of the goals. We need to go uh, look at uh, data as far as enrollment and projections for the community. Go uh, look at uh, uh, you know the uh, funding. What 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 are our funding opportunities out there? Uh, look at our current uh, land and, and what uh, what could we do with that that land? Do we look at um, you know building on this site? Do we look at building um, at the high school? Do we look at uh, you know, an option where we brought So. I've, I've sort of put the facility strategic plan part on hold, uh, awaiting some of this guidance from our, our uh, uh, consultants. And I've moved it into a, a plan of, of trying to work with the uh, facilities committee that we get established in, 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 in developing the, uh, an actual master, uh, master facilities plan. So that's that's sort of the direction uh, I've gone. I've invited most all of the people that were part of the uh, strategic plan uh, committee to participate in the facility plan, as well as bring some additional people into um, the, the, uh, the master facilities planning committee. But uh, that's sort of uh, the direction that, that I have taken in my life.
by her years of service uh, to the district. Very much appreciated. Thank you. As well as Don, thank you so much. appreciate the I would also like to say thank you. Um, those of you who don't know, it's my mom, and uh, her her passion and her uh, just total giving spirit as a teacher inspired me to be a teacher. And her strength of character has guided me my entire life. So of course I love my mom. But, you know, so so yeah. This is totally out of the window, but how many of you students had Mrs. Harris by Sharpness? She's a small yeah, number. Mrs. Harris. Mrs. Harris. We're all so <laughs> here. Right. She's a good Thank you. Any other comments or questions? I will say that both of those with Mrs. Harris and Mr. Logan uh, have over 30 years of experience that they've dedicated and committed to our own district, so we certainly appreciate that. How many of you guys just for water Go ahead. Shout out on that. Congratulations. Why? Mr. Steve, will you call roll, please? Mr. Spanner. Yes. Mrs. Heatherly. Yes. Mrs. Dahl. I think I, I have to abstain. It's the, uh, okay, can I vote no? Or, <laughs> <laughs> I think you should ask your mother. <laughs> <laughs> um, if I don't have sustain, I'll vote yes. Mrs. Dunaway? Yes. Mr. Benton? Yes. Yeah. That motion is approved. All right, so next one is resignation. I'll get this correct. Sorry, before. Uh, this is resignation. This is uh, approval to accept the following resignation, and that's Mr. Andrew Colbert with the uh, High School National Honor Society. That would be the deputy to the Mr. Colbert, will you call roll, please? Mr. Discussion. I'll just make a comment that uh, for the past several years, uh, Mr. Calder has been the advisor for that, uh, the NHS, and he's done a very, very nice job. Uh, so we appreciate his service and commitment on that. Please call roll. Mrs. Dahl? Yes. Mrs. Dunaway? Yes. Mrs. Heatherly? Yes. Mr. Spano? Yes. Mr. Ventures? Yes. That motion is approved. Item C, substitute. Recommended approval of Paul Winkler for our substitute position for the 2017-18 school year in proper certification and paperwork. Motion. Second. And motion and second. This is Heather uh, and Mr. Dahl. Discussion? Uh, we met Mr. Winkler earlier this evening and uh, just uh, want to, oh, yes, and that's for Mrs. Porter's decision. She will take maternity leave, so I'd like to have him on board and have that in place. Call roll, please. Mrs. Heatherly? Yes. Mrs. Dahl? Yes. Mrs. Dunaway? Yes. Mr. Spano? Yes. Mr. Benjamins? Yes. And most of the Excellent. Item D, supplemental. Approval to employ Patty Lynch as a volunteer placeholder advisor for the 2017 18 school year. All motion. Second. Motion and second, Mr. Donald. Mr. Donald. Discussion. I'll just mention that uh, this is interested in involved with the placeholder group and team uh, and, and very dedicated and engaged for. A number of years. All roll, please. <coughs> Dalton? Yes. Mrs. Dunaway? Yes. Mrs. Heatherly? Yes. Mr. Spano? Yes. Mr. Benjamin? Yes. And yeah, motion in the third. All right, I have. 
item E. Uh, this is for the out-of-state and overnight trip. Approval of the following overnight and out-of-state trip. That's the high school quiz team, uh, April the 25th through the 29th, 2018. This is 26, sorry. 26th to the 29th. Second. We have a motion and a second. Discussion. Uh, but they'll be going to the uh, National History School, is where they're headed. Uh, that's in Washington, D.C. And uh, they will leave school on Thursday uh, late in the afternoon and will return in the second. Any questions? Mr. Venter? Yes. Mr. Dunaway? Yes. Mr. Dunaway? Yes. Mr. Heatherly? Yes. Mr. Spanner? Yes. I have yes. approval to leave the Greater Western Ohio Conference League at the completion of the 2019-2020 school year and senior if the mutual if there's no mutual agreement. Right. And sooner if by mutual agreement. I'll move. Second. Got a motion to second. Discussion. I'll just I'll just highlight that uh, we spoke about this earlier. Uh, certainly, that's the G walk. That's the extended version of G walk. Uh, and we've had a great experience there. Uh, there's just some changes in alignment. Part of that's based on what they call competitive balance. Uh, schools are, you know, at, at a convenient traveling distance that will be uh, in those that will be uh, withdrawing from the GWAG and uh, the rivalries. Uh, schools that would be involved with this would be Fairport, Greenville, it was Sydney, Stevens, Tiffany, uh, Troy, Danielle Butler, West Carrollton, and Zenia. Uh, I know at least eight now. Yeah. Uh, 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 Call roll, please. Mrs. Dahl? Yes. Mrs. Dunaway? Yes. Mrs. Heatherly? Yes. Mr. Spano? Yes. Mr. Benders? Yes. That motion is approved. Item G, grant acceptance. Approval to accept. $3,663.59 in grant dollars from the Typical Educational Endowment. Those grants will be out of that discussion. Second. Okay, second. I have a motion for Ms. Heavily, second for Ms. Dow. I call the discussion. Those grants include a uh, grant from Broadway Elementary written by Heather Wetzel uh, that's uh, regarding a spatial balance ball chair for students. Uh, LG Ball at the Intermediate School uh, was raised by Mrs. Heather Kerr and Andrew Wampler, and that's about flexible learning communities. And then there is a grant from LG Ball to uh, Tippett New Middle School, that's a sixth grade orientation grant that is written by Mr. Clavercall. And then uh, to the middle school, we had another grant, and that was uh, written by Mrs. Cassie Shaw and uh, Mrs. Danny Stein. And that's Google Expeditions Kit. Uh, and so that's the four grants that are being funded to education now. Yes, I think they are. Yeah, they were doing those at uh, Oh, did they? I to watch their site class and stuff. Okay. That's great. Any discussion? I'd like to thank the uh, Educational Endowment for the fund of the group. They have been generous in the previous years. But the school has been in the demonstration of this gift as well as the video. 
Call roll, please. Mrs. Heatherly? Yes. Mrs. Dahl? Yes. Mrs. Dunaway? Yes. Mr. Spanner? Yes. Mr. Benders? Yes. That motion is approved. All right, item H, uh, discussion on the school walkouts and policies 57 8, 55 20, 52 23, 22 40, and 24 30. Yeah. Is it, uh, you want, want me, I, I want to There's nothing to vote on. Well, um, I can start this discussion. I was wondering what drove the decision to assist in a walkout instead of offering, well, I, I mean, you know, we didn't have to offer a walkout, but instead of maybe using different activities like the other school districts around us, like a walk-up activity or a um, moment of silence in the building. What drove the decision to do a walk out of school? I'll, I'll respond to that in sure. that, uh, and Mr. Vinners was involved in this as well. Uh, myself and Mr. Vinners would have the, the privilege of sitting down with about 15 students from the high school with Mr. Beerhoff and Mr. Oaks. And uh, at that time, it was an open discussion about the upcoming uh, walkout date that was projected nationally. Uh, and so it was important for us that they, it was their ideas, that they were creating and discussing among themselves uh, what this might consist of and what it might look like. Uh, there was a discussion about a sit-in, uh, and certainly in my heart, that is something that I would have been more comfortable with because I just think about the school safety, student safety. Uh, and we talked just a little bit about safety, but ultimately their ideas as they spoke and talked among themselves, uh, they expressed that they felt that there was uh, a symbolism and representation about walking out. And that uh, they also expressed that they thought that they needed to uh, have some guidelines that they wanted to put together, and they began going over to the whiteboard and uh, sharing ideas about being respectful, being you know peaceful, about that it should mean something, that they shouldn't be just time away from the classroom, that there should be an attorney, that different students would have different reasons, uh, but that they be united by walking and taking the time, uh, and also began with the discussion talking about how they might orchestrate it with 17 minutes is what was suggested nationally. And so they were thinking, well then, one student's name, because there were 17 victims, would be named once each minute, and possibly the individuals that would be doing that would have a, a photocopy or of the uh, individual, the student, and they talked about the grade level, which that they, you know, would presently in for the deceased and thought that that would be information that other peers would be interested in. Uh, they talked about things such as uh, really limiting cell phones. They knew that they really didn't want to be really monitoring and, and having discussions about the telephone play, but they wanted to say, please, would you be considering that any part of respectfulness to not have telephones out? Uh, that it was a time of, of uh, reflection and uh, honoring people, and uh, so they put that up on the list as well. I probably have a few more things that they, but basically was generated by them, it was their discussion, and uh, they were very clear that they wanted that to be represented as a positive piece, and that they wanted it to be the representation of our student body, about being able to come together and have a voice in a different way, but uh, that can be represented on that day. Yes, please. Yes. I just want to emphasize, coming in that meeting, really how little involvement or, or encouragement they could see from the school. This really was something the students wanted to do. Um, I think, regardless of whatever other alternatives would have been suggested, this is what most of them would have done anyway. Uh, and so, when we were there, it was almost more like gathering intelligence on the kind of plan. You know, so sort that of the administration knew how to respond to it, knew how to keep the kids safe and something good. 
and not at all about directing what they were doing. And I don't think they would have been fairly deceptive. They wanted to make a statement. And uh, that's what they did. And I think uh, uh, the administration really did a good job in sort of learning what the plan was and making sure that you know, we could uh, respond to the program. Um, it was made clear to them by Mr. Gearhoff that they were not using the PA system, uh, resources to plan to, to, uh, you know, to uh, help advertise the event. So, uh, and, and as Dr. Jones indicated, they really felt like it seemed to be the symbolism for them of walking out of school and working. If their message was that you know, the school's not safe, there's some, which I don't think of course, but there was some symbolism in walking out. That, that was kind of that So, uh, so I think, you know, uh, I, I think there's some this, uh, incorrect idea that the school had more planning or encouragement. So the the students that you met with, it, did you meet with them during the school day? Okay, and they, they weren't from like a student group. They were just seventeen random students that wanted to meet with you guys. Well, one it was over their lunch period, so I right. it's right. Was it your lunch yes, period? Yes, it was over their lunch period. Uh, and I know that Duke students are in uh, my uh, the principal's advisory for the lunch group, and then there's some others that are in that, but they're also student leaders that might be part of the student senate. So we have different sectors. Uh, Mr. Beerhoff, I won't say orchestrated that, but I'll say that the word was out that that meeting was going to be there. He did seem to be a writing but it wasn't attached with um, any group necessarily from no. high school, just 17, 15 kids that were just concerned about what had happened and they wanted to join this movement of walking out. Yes. Okay. And, and then that leads me um, to my other question about um, once it kind of became clear that this was associated with a political movement, with the, the flyer that went, was passed out at lunch that had the um, URL that led to a, a political site. Did anybody talk to the kids about keeping clear of politics and that this is a movement in fact for symbolism and not in support of politics? So I know that discussion occurred on the day that we met. We talked about a, a number of things, and one of those that uh, that's the, the political piece that really they were representing honoring and also I'm the, the individuals and I think the stitch of desire for safety. Uh, the the URL that was a piece that I did not understand was going to be added to their outline that they, or other information that they were disseminating. And I did receive that later, but if they kept passing that out, I would be at uh, lunchtime. And uh, it was brought to my attention. Uh, and uh, the high school administration was aware of that URL being on it as well. I did not personally talk to them. But somebody did speak with them about that because also on that piece of paper, the part that really concerned me was that it said THS at the top, which it means Tip City High School. And then when you attach that with a URL, that leads you to a site that promotes one political view, not many sides of this horrible issue. Um, that that is concerning, especially when we have policies where um, we're not trying to persuade students to a political or any kind of particular view. We want to present a broad picture to them to help them develop their own opinions and express themselves as individuals, not just um, kind of lead them down a, a, one, a one path. And when it says THS and it has a URL that leads to a political website, that to me is very concerning. 
think I have that. I believe the statement below, right above it, um, yeah, I think it said THS at the top, and then my URL, and I forget what it said to me. Uh, I think it was a statement yeah. that was, I, it seemed to me to be copied and pasted because I followed the URL and went to um, a walkout site. And there was a statement on this walkout site, and it looked very similar to the statement then that was on this um, flyer that was passed out. Yeah, I just think attaching the URL to a piece of paper that was handed out at lunch made it very political, and that that that's what I had a problem with as well. And I don't mind students, right? I don't mind students, right? And I don't I don't mind them being political and having a political opinion. We have, as a board, um, policies that say we're not going to get involved with politics for the kids. We're going to let them have their own opinions. We're going to provide them with information to develop their own opinions, but we're not going to promote one opinion above another. And when it says THS, and then it only leads you to one site, there's not like there were two URLs where students could go check out either side or more sides of, a, of an issue. That's where my concern is. I'll, I'll just go back to the aspect that if there was discussion of the URL, that both of us, Mr. Finney and I both touched base on that. Both of us missed that piece. I thought there might be something that would represent back to some of the other things that they had outlined about that day. Uh, I, I, I thought that the, I would, as I was looking at this, I mean, once again, it, it just says, uh, it has the URL though there, but it, it, I guess I still feel like it's a bit of a free choice about that. It is guiding in there. I will give you that. And when I did go and look at it, it tells me out. It's more of a in charge than what I had anticipated. Mm -hmm. uh, I Right, but as, as a school, our policy says that we're not going to take sides in, in issues. The document. the document has our name on it. It was passed out in our high school by our students. They worked in conjunction with them. They met during lunch. They met during lunch. They sure what the students do is they plan a response and make sure the state says it wasn't at all to direct to the activity or size. You help them plan it, like I said, to make clear to them that you wouldn't. I, I just think that there were a lot of good examples from the surrounding districts of how to handle this in a way that met a lot of students' needs. There were still districts that offered activities in the buildings with students that still felt super, um, uh, you know, like impassioned to one side. They still walked out, but they still used that right of protest to walk out of the building. And, you know, those students were held to whatever those school districts do. What I'm saying is that we didn't offer an alternative. We didn't. We didn't that's show us that. us organizing it. That's that's the difficulty. The other schools, and I know that there are a lot of great ideas that they have, and this is what they came up with. And I know, as a school, that our teachers actually contacted the, the teachers there in Florida, and that they had a banner and they signed it because they found out that they were going to have banners in the hallways, and that was school orchestrated and school school connected and. We mailed that out, mm -hmm. uh, and um, I feel proud that our students were involved with that, and, and our teachers helped orchestrate that. But in the end, if we would have said we need to be going to the gym, we will get you speakers, then we would have been creating. They didn't ask, "Can you get us some speakers?" Mm -hmm. We or could we reach out to have a list of speakers we can choose from? And there was, that wasn't asked. And they ended up after the discussion, it was a thoughtful discussion, mm -hmm. uh, that they preferred to walk out. And then they talked about you know, how, what time it would be, how long it would be, what they would be doing while they were there, you know, the, the, like I said, the cell phones would be out. So it was very creative. At these other buildings, 
I'm not sitting in there, so I don't know how much was administrative input and how much wasn't. And so that's what's difficult. Right. I, I just have a, a really hard time with the amount of time that students were out of classrooms, the amount of disruption this was to the educational processes at both the middle school and the high school. Um, I have a hard time with just one side of this, one site going home to students, to our, our homes. I mean, it was brought into my house from the high school. I can't imagine how many other houses received the same um, political statement form in just one side. Um, and, and I just think that we could do it better. We could offer them, you know, I was in, when I was in high school, they taught us how to write letters. They taught us how to do things so that, you know, we could still express ourselves. We were never not allowed to express any of our beliefs. Um, we were held to the rules, just like I am at my job. You know, I can't do certain things. I, I can have whatever political beliefs I want. I can't walk out of my job. Right. Well, I can walk out of my job. I'll be held to consequences. At our school and at our district as well. And that was one of the things. What I will say is, I mean, I think I attended webinars on this to Reverend Edgar and then, uh, all kinds of resources. This is your dear Boston as well. But we were trying to read up about it, to know as much as we could, to help them be safe but not cross lines. And uh, we did create what I call guidelines and handouts that were uh, brought to our staff. Uh, and they had meetings. I met with my administrative staff, and then we met, that was after I did attended webinars and didn't get as much information as they could. And then uh, they actually met, had meetings with their own staff, and then they kind of outlined it up. We made meetings with the supervisors that go out. That at the high school, I, Mr. Beerpong was not here this evening, that I've had multiple conversations with him. He would say that it really was off a great loss of instruction time because ultimately those that did not walk out remained in class. Mm -hmm. Those that were going out, that in itself was a form of a learning experience for them because I doubt if they have done anything like that before. And just once again, that all the government students here tonight that it is a way of raising their, their opinion for the community. So I, I hear your concern. And I certainly do not want it to be excessive. An hour and a half, an hour, all of that is too long. 17 minutes would probably have been about a total of 20 minutes because all the people so cold that I mean, right from the dot at 17, they were getting back in. Uh, that I, I don't think, I don't think it was excessive. And I do think that you know, we do have to continue to monitor, and hopefully the students will continue to keep us in the dialogue. That's really important. It's a side breaking down, and I know the administration does. Do you have further dates planned for one? Well, one is on March 24th, and that falls on a Saturday. Uh, sure. another, another one uh, could be in April, but. Uh, I'm not getting contacted, that, and so I don't know, and I know everybody right now has free time. Well, I just say, if we say we're not planning, but we're spending a lot of time meeting about it, we're not not planning it. But I think that goes we're to safety. We're, we're safety not aspect. leading it. So we want to keep it safe. I want to keep it safe. And I think every student in that room is sure that safety was the most important thing to me. I, I'm just I'm, I'm not sure that we're following our policies as we have them right So I, I'll just say that I, I was fortunate to take Matthew who our attorney was in this I had to look at everything I had. And I also, we had uh, Mr. Mitchell, I believe, is back now. I kept asking, I want to know, are we calling for students to tell me, guide me, if I need to be doing something different? And they stood by that students have a first amendment right, and we are a public school, and that ultimately, if they're not disrupting, if they're not disrupting on others, they're being respectful, you know, uh, uh, that the calls, they, they seem to feel that it fell within the correct. I think I'd like to just say that you know this this was a catastrophic event. We surely don't want to see this event ever happen. So it's something that we all spent a lot of time talking about. Right 
but as the Board of Education, we're accountable to the city taxpayers in Tip City who question us as to why we that happened. And I think that's what the concern is about. Um, so, in, in speaking for myself, it's not about denying your First Amendment rights, but assuring that you're following the policy that's accountable to all of our stakeholders. And students are our stakeholders as well. So, um, I, I, I understand clearly that you're trying not to organize anything. And what I'm hoping that the students here hear is that your voices need to be reaching out to the administrators for whatever you might be Alright, we'll move on. Uh, under miscellaneous, this will be the first reading of uh, new and revised and legal policies and guidelines. Uh, those were published uh, uh, around four docs under draft. Uh, you, uh, you all need to make sure you're reviewing those. Uh, comments uh, that we will talk uh, We will have uh, at the next regular board meeting, the next regular board meeting, a vote to accept those policies. So if you go to policies, and then you go to policy manual, uh, go to policy, go to the the draft, and then uh, policy manual uh, is correct. Click on the bylaws. You'll see this one there, copy of bylaws form, for live with programs. There's three policies that are going to be, four policies that are going to be in the uh, so that's how you uh, review those policies. So you need to make sure that you do what says draft that key piece. You got to say draft so, at the top. Yeah, yeah. Up at the, the top bar, drop down there, and you'll say draft, and then you go over to the, the left. So they're under both policy manual and administrative. Uh, what, what is the highlight? The highlight are the changes. Sister Sabella, well, I don't know. We may need some more training. Yes, because it's a different section. Well, it's about policies adopted by the Sister Sabella, I don't know if you want to make any comments on the draft or the policy manual. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and say that I don't have any comments on the draft. Oh, there you go. Yeah, so the very bottom one. All right, I'm going back to the agenda. The uh, next upcoming meetings, uh, we have a uh, we have our next regular meeting on April 23rd. We have a tri agency meeting on April 30th. I think we have a workshop on April 9th that's not just in the agenda. So, April 9th at 6 p.m., that is the work education. Now, we have that slated for here because we're going to go through the strategic plan. So, are we going to move that back to the board office? I think that's yes. All right, so April 9th will be at the board office. That will be at 6 p.m., April 23rd. 6.30, again, at the Board of Education, and then by agency, April 30th, uh, at uh, Mineral Township, and really not a board meeting, but a community engagement session is going to start for April 24th, and that is going to be at, what time? 6 p.m., and that will be in this building. That's our schedule for upcoming meetings. Any other questions? All right. Um, I have an executive session uh, scheduled next. Uh, take a 
motion for uh, two items in the executive session. One is to prepare for negotiations or bargaining sessions with public employees. The second is to consider the complaints against the public employee, official, licensee, or regulated individual. I will make that motion and we just second. Second. We have a second. Mrs. Heatherly. <laughs> Mrs. Fanno. Yes. Mr. Heather. Uh, Mrs. Heatherly. Yes. Mrs. Dahl. Yes. Mrs. Dunaway. Yes. Mr. Benders. Yes. When we adjourn the executive session, we'll take a five-minute break. Uh,